Bonjour à tous. Hi everybody, it's your sister Ari here for another Heart to Home devotional. I hope that you're doing very well today. Um, why don't we pray, come before the Lord before we begin. So Father, Lord, I just I thank you that you are a holy and perfect God. Lord, would you just guide these next few minutes by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would encourage, correct, and remind us, Lord. Father, be, be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today I wanted to talk a little bit about perfectionism. And, you know, the desire to do a thing well is not a bad one. You know, often our desire could be to honor the Lord with something done excellently. And that's, that's a good thing. But our hearts, you know, get tangled in sin and we soon strive to do things on our own strength or for the praise of others. Perfectionism even prevents us from doing things, you know, from doing anything out of fear that we won't reach a perfect standard. And so, you know, we have the fear of failure the fear of others, and self-reliance. And perfectionism can look like a very anxious heart. I immediately think of the Pharisees, you know, who were the epitome of perfectionists, uh, described by legalism, pride, and judgment, judgment for others. And so we know that God alone is perfect, and His perfection is manifested in Jesus Christ. And to receive Jesus Christ into our lives is to receive his perfection so that God accepts us as righteous because of Christ. And, and that's the gospel. I mean, we need to constantly be preaching the gospel to ourselves in the various aspects that, you know, it directly applies to our life. And so this, this righteousness is worked out in our lives so that we actually take on the character of Christ. And... This is a process of being perfected by God's power as we trust in, in Christ and train ourselves and in, in grow in godliness. And the way we, we combat this thinking of perfectionism is by understanding grace. We know from Ephesians 2 verse 5, it is by grace that we've been saved. And another beautifying aspect of grace is is pouring out grace to others because when we are confronted by just how much we don't measure up to God's perfection we can begin to view others more and more um, in, in the view of grace and of extending grace to them and so Jesus gives us his righteousness and grows us to live it out um, in Hebrews uh, chapter 10 verse 14 it says, by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. And so it's true that the Bible calls us, you know, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, be perfect as our heavenly father is perfect. And here the, the Greek word for perfect used here is teleos. And it means brought to its end, completed or perfect. So... So to be perfect in this sense is, is not, you know, the sense how perfectionists often imagine it. Rather, it's, it's to be complete in Christ, to be completed in Christ. So um, in, in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it says Paul is um, talking about, um, he says that completion is the work of Christ. He created us, he saves us, and he's faithful to perfect us. And that's a continual work, you know, that's a continual you know, work in progress. And so we can rely on God's perfection as our refuge. In Psalm verse, or chapter 18, verse 30, the psalmist says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. And so I love this, this moment of worship because it sets the heart at rest in the perfection of God and his word. It's not, you know, necessarily talking about 
victory over, you know, I have the victory, I am being, you know, uh, we can sometimes get this very um, self-focused, victorious mindset over sin, but when it's just about the Lord and his perfection, worship for God, um, yeah, I just, I love that, um, that verse. So, I, I hope that this encourages you and, and gives us an opportunity again to just examine our intentions, examine our hearts before the Lord. So why don't we pray as we close? Lord, strong God, thank you, Lord, that we walk in your strength, Lord. Um, continue your work in, in, of transformation in us, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being near to us. We, uh, I just lift up my brothers and sisters at Calvary Hemet and pray that you would richly bless them, Lord. And uh, thank you, Father. We love you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, church family, I love you and I will see you soon. A bientôt.